Hey, this is Math 7, Unit 6, Lesson 6, called Distinguishing Between Two Types of Situations. And today's lesson is going to be a little short because there's some activities you're going to do in your class today that I can't really replicate here in the video. So first of all, we're going to be looking at uh, equations with and without parentheses and the kind of situations they describe. So when we look first of all at these four um, equations here, we notice that one has parentheses, the other ones do not, and we want to look at which one belongs, which one doesn't belong. Um, so what we might want to take a look at is things like here I have a 4 and an X and a 12 right they all seem to have the 9 that's all in common so those are all in common there but when I look here I have a 4 and an X which matches that one and the 12 so these two seem to be very much aligned this one has a 3 and an X so I'm not sure what that's about but it certainly doesn't match those ones and then this 4 doesn't have an X with it so that one really seems to be an oddball so far but this one's a little different. And we notice here that we have four times the quantity x plus three. If I was to use the distributive property, I can multiply four times x to come up with four x, and I do four times three, which becomes plus 12. Once I do that, I recognize that this is the same as this, which is the same as this one and this one. So all three of these are the same equation, just written in three different ways. In your class today, your teacher was going to give you a set of cards that show equations. You want to sort those cards into categories of your choosing and be prepared to explain the meanings of your categories. Then sort the cards into two categories in a different way and then be ready to explain your meaning. So the cards you get, put them into two categories is the idea. You sort them any way you like, just have an explanation for why you put them the way you put them. Let's look at 6-3. Here we have two situations, situation A and situation B. Now we have some stories, story one and two, and we want to match this diagram with the story and explain. And then we want to talk about what the variables represent within each of the diagrams. And then we're going to write an equation and then find the value of the variable. So looking up here, we notice that we have x three times and we have a 12 and the total sum uh, goes up to 90. Over here, we're doing y plus 12, but we're doing the same thing three times for a sum of 90. So let's take a look at the first story. It says Lynn had 90 flyers to hang up around the school. Well, so far, that could go with either one. She gave 12 flyers to each of three volunteers. So notice, everybody in the three volunteers, all three get 12. When I look up here, I see the 12 one time, but here I see the 12 happening three different times. So already I'm leaning towards the idea that this story matches B. Let's see what else we have. Then she took the remaining flyers and divided them up equally between the three volunteers. All right, well that would kind of make sense for B. So I would say that B represents story one. And the reason for that is going to be I can see that 12 is within each of the three volunteers and everybody gets the remaining flyers. So in this case here, the Y represents the remaining flyers that are divided up. And right, remaining flyers here that are divided up between the volunteers is what Y represents. That would make story A, uh, sorry, story number two match equation or tape diagram A. Let's see what it says. It says there were 90 flyers to hang up around the school. After giving the same number of flyers to each of the three volunteers, she had 12 left. So we have our three volunteers, volunteer one, two, and three, and she had 12 left to hang up by herself. In this case, we would say the X is gonna represent the number of flyers for the, I'm going to just shorten here, for the volunteers. So X represents the number of flyers for each volunteer that she gave them. And 12 is what she got to put up on her own. So when you write an equation for these, let's look at A. A becomes 3X's plus 12 equals 90. This one over here becomes a quantity of Y plus 12 times 3, because it's happening 3 times, equals 90. So those are our two different equations that we're working with here. 
So to find the solution for that, to find the value of the variable, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So 3x is going to be equal to 90 minus 12 is 78. I'll divide both sides by 3 to find out in this case here, x is equal to 26. Over here, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to start with so that I have y plus 12 equals 90 divided by 3 is 30. I'll subtract 12, subtract 12, so that y is equal to 18. So in reference to our story then, what we can say is that for the x value, it means that all the volunteers were given 26 flyers each, and she had to hang up 12. Over here, it says that in this, this first story here, is that everyone got 12 flyers and then after everyone got 12 she still had more and everybody got an additional 18 flyers so that's the additional 18 flyers that go there and everyone right here started with 26 flyers there and that's how the stories work all right so that was today's lesson was looking at a couple different ways you can write these equations whether you're using parentheses or not and how that works out there okay so in summary of today's lesson Again, it's just saying that there are two main types of situations that can be represented with an equation, and we have an example of each of them in here. So with these different situations, we can sometimes have uh, six times a quantity, x plus eight, or we could have just six equal groups and we're adding an additional amount there. So different ways to show some, some variety. Let's take a look at tonight's homework. All right, question one, it says the school ordered three large boxes of board markers. So these are gonna be, because I see three, are three boxes of board markers. After giving 15 markers to each of its three teachers, sorry, these become our three teachers, right? This is teacher one, teacher two, teacher three. So we're giving 15 markers to each teacher, 15, 15, 15. There were 90 markers left, so. We have all these boxes of board markers, and then everybody gets 15, and then you have 90 left over. The question is how many markers were originally in each box? How many markers were originally in each box? So to solve that, we're gonna take a look at what we're given. We have the, the difference of X and 15 here, and that happens three times because there's three teachers, and that's gonna equal the 90 that were left. To find out how many were there there were before, I'm going to solve for x. So I divide both sides by 3. So that x minus 15 equals 30. 90 divided by 3 is 30, right? And then, um, yeah, then we're going to add 15 to both sides, add 15 to both sides, and x is going to be equal to 45. So what this tells me is that there are 45 markers in the boxes to begin with. And so you think about it, there are 45 to start with, then they took 15 out, so there are 30 left. Those 30 were given to three teachers, 30 times three to be the sum total of 90. So kind of work in this direction, you can work up to that number there, or we can work back from 90 to get to the 45, which is what we did here in our first equation. Number two. The diagram can be represented by the equation 25 equals 2 plus 6x. Explain where you can see the 6 in the diagram. So we have 6x here in the equation, and all we have to do is explain here that the 6x is going to be right here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. And the 6 comes from the 6 different x's that are in this tape diagram here. When I combine them together, x plus x plus x plus x plus x plus x, that becomes a sum total of six x's. All right, number three. My equation's here, my question's on the next side, so bear with me here. It says Elena walked 20 minutes more than Lynn, okay? So we're gonna call Lynn, uh, for now, I'll just call Lynn an L. So here's Lynn, so Lynn plus 20 is how far Elena walks. Elena walks. Lynn's distance plus 20. Jada walked 
twice as long as Elena. So if I take Elena's value of L plus 20 and I multiply that by two, that tells me how far Jada walked. It says Jada walked for 90 minutes. So I can also say in this case here that Jada equals 90 minutes. Okay, now let's take a look at the questions. The question here says, and my, it says my equation is two times X plus 20 equals 90, which is a lot like what we have right here. We're just turning this L into an X plus 20. And I already said that it equals 90, so we'll say it equals 90. So let's use that equation to the, on the next side. So we had two times X plus 20 equals 90. So how does this work out here? This we said was how far Lynn walked. Lynn walked that far. Now Elena, she walked Lynn's distance plus an additional 20 minutes, or Lynn's time plus 20 minutes. But Jada walked all of this, Elena's time, times two, which it also said was 90 minutes. So looking at this one here, one X, uh, what does the X go with? The X goes with Lynn's time, which is going to be the number of minutes that Lynn walked, C. The X plus 20 goes with, it corresponds to the number of minutes that Elena walked. So that would go with B. The 2 times X plus 20, that's Lynn plus 20, that's Elena, and twice Elena represents how far Jada walked, but so does the 90. The 90 also represents that as well. So both of those would represent that one. So we could say that one is C, two is B, three is A, and four is A. Or you can draw the lines there to make that work. And finally, number four, match each story to the equation. And two of the stories match the same equation. So let's take a look here. All right, so we have uh, three times the quantity X plus five, we have three X plus five, five times the quantity X plus three, and then 5x plus 3 equals 17. It says Jada's teacher fills a travel bag with five copies of a textbook. Five copies of textbook. The weight of the bag and books is, 50, is 17 pounds. The empty travel bag weighs three pounds. How much does each book weigh? So what we're saying is we have five books. We don't know how, how much they weigh, but we know that the bag is three pounds. So the books, five books, times whatever the weight is, plus the three pounds, is gonna be equal to 17. That to me seems like it matches number four right there. So this one here goes with number one. You could draw a little line there if you chose to, but I'm just gonna write the equation as I go along. The next one says a piece of scenery for school play is in the shape of a five foot long rectangle. So a five foot long rectangle. The designer decides to increase the length. So we're going to increase the length. We don't know how much, but we're going to increase it. There are going to be three identical rectangles. So each rectangle is going to be, I'm going to have three of those with a total length of 17. The total length of 17. By how much the designer increased the length. And we're going to find solve for x for that length increase. This equation is going to be found over here at the first one three times the sum of x plus five equals 17, right there. Okay, number three. Elena spends $17, way to go, $17. And what she does, she buys a $3 book and a bookmark, $3 book and a bookmark, we don't have a price there, for each of her five cousins. So she buys a $3 book and a bookmark, we don't know how much that is, but she does that five times because there are five cousins. So where do I see five times the sum of uh, the quantity, uh, five times the, the sum of three plus X? I find it right here, five X plus three equals 17. Yeah, it's a little different order, but it's all the same. Number four, Noah packs up his bags of the food pantry to deliver families. He packs five bags that weigh a total of 17 pounds. So he has five bags that weigh a total of 17 pounds. Okay, so we know it's 17 pounds, five bags. Each bag contains three pounds of groceries. So three pounds of groceries and 
So three pounds of groceries and a packet of papers. So three pounds of the groceries and pa pa packet of papers, we don't know, is what we have. But there are five of those. So that's what's in the bag. Five times equals 17. So that's going to match five times the quantity three plus x, 17. It's the same one right here. So that goes right there. Same as the last one. And finally, Andre has three times as many pencils as Noah. So whatever Noah has, he has three times as many as Noah and five pens. He has 17 altogether. So he has three times as many as Noah does plus five pens for 17 in total. So three X plus five equals 17, which matches number two. And that's it for today. Hope it helps you out. We'll see you next time.